So last Sunday, Pope Francis gave a million and a half young people three words to pray over and to think about. And I invite you to meditate on these particular words as well. They are shine, listen, and unafraid. Shine, listen, and unafraid. And it's so neat how they were meant for the feast day of the Transfiguration last Sunday, but the readings actually speak about those three same words today. So first, let's talk about the word shine. This is connected to the second reading today. To shine with the light of Christ means that it's a light that always has to go outward and not focused as a spotlight on ourselves. This is what Mary does when she is having Jesus Christ within her womb, the very light shining forth, but it moves her to rise and go with haste to take care of her cousin Elizabeth, who is pregnant at an elderly age with St. John the Baptist. And the Pope reminds us in this past homily that we need to be careful when we talk about shining the light of Christ that we don't have the temptation to focus that light on ourself. And this is maybe a good examine of conscience. When we do something, why are we doing it? What's our intention? St. Ignatius of Loyola talks about the importance of purifying our intentions so that they are totally towards love of God and love of neighbor. Because sometimes when we do something, and I'm preaching to myself, we kind of are doing it more to shine the light on ourselves, to say, look at me. Look at how wonderful I am taking care of this person in need. Kind of pat ourselves on the back. Don't, don't we do this sometimes? If we really look deep in our heart, many times we're doing something more for ourselves versus truly for the other. Now, in that reading today from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, St. Paul is shining this powerful light of Christ, of charity, to his brothers and sisters who are the people of Israel. And he says these words. He says, I have such great sorrow. I wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people. This is someone who's willing, he says, I'm willing to be annihilated just so that my people can discover who I met. Because this is a time, one of the great sadnesses of St. Paul is he is one of the people of Israel, and yet he's seeing so many of his brothers and sisters in this family of faith missing the Messiah. And he's saying, I just, I want them to come to know the one that I've gotten to know. And so he's shining not to say, look at how good I am, but he's just pouring everything out that he's received. And so we need to ask the Lord to shine upon us so that that light can go out. And a great place to do this is in Eucharistic adoration. This is this time of Eucharistic revival. We allow ourselves to be in front of the Blessed Sacrament, and he changes us. He fills us with his light so that we can go forth and live out that Eucharist that we receive at Mass deep within our care and concern for our neighbor in need. And so living a Eucharistic spirituality is to receive, but then shine forth. So that's maybe the first word to think about, shine, and to think about how am I putting the spotlight on me? How do I need to keep allowing it to be like Mary, who's reflecting? She's the moon. The moon doesn't keep the light for itself, but it receives from the sun, and then it brings light in the darkness. How do we imitate Mary's example in bringing the light of Christ to a wounded humanity? 
The second word is to listen. Shine, listen. And this is a great one to think about in the first reading today. We have Elijah who is listening to find where the presence of God is. And he's looking in a hurricane. He's looking in a strong, um, crushing rocks. He's looking in fire and earthquake. But it says God wasn't found in any of those. And then there's this little tiny whisper, something that you would miss. And because he's listening, he hears that. And he finds the presence of God there. And so in this homily last Sunday, Pope Francis said, we need to listen to God and to find him in the Gospels, to remember that the Gospel proclaimed is not just a story about some guy who lived a while ago, but it is actively Jesus Christ's voice coming to us through the power of the Holy Spirit, which is ultimately the Father's love letter to us, his children. And so maybe a way of thinking about how to listen is to listen like Elijah, who found God's voice in that which was underwhelming. Many times we look in the earthquake, we look in the fire, we look for all the big spectacular things, and certainly the Lord in certain circumstances can do very spectacular things. Think of the story of Our Lady of Fatima and having the very sun dance in the sky and come down and come up. Think of the Eucharistic miracles that happen in which the host becomes living heart tissue. The Lord can certainly do those things, but the way that he usually comes to us is going to be in these very ordinary ways. It's the way he came at Christmas, when everyone else missed, except for the little guys, the shepherds. And so the Lord wants us to learn how to discover him not in the big wow, but in the thing that seems so ordinary, because that's where his powerful presence will be found. Think about what happens at Mass. You don't have this giant strobe light happening, and you don't have a voice being like, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Jesus. Like, we don't have that at Mass. You have quiet, and you have these simple words as the priest holds just an ordinary piece of bread. But he says these words that change the cosmos. This is my body. This is my blood. And Jesus is found there. We need to learn how to approach Mass in this way. Because if we come wanting to be entertained, we're always going to leave disappointed. There's going to always be something that the world of entertainment will always compete better with. But we're not here for a movie. We're here for the God of the universe to change bread and wine into himself. And that body and blood of Jesus Christ will change us into his very heart, sending us out to shine that light. And the only way that we're going to discover to be overwhelmed by that which is underwhelming is to have the heart of a child. Because remember, the kingdom of heaven belongs to the little guys. It's because they understand how to be wowed by that which underwhelms us adults. Think about the ordinary things. They don't need a big giant dragon on the side of a door to be wowed. They literally can just open the door and close the door. Open the door and close the door. They can take the, this bottle cap, take it off, and be so amazed. Put it back on. And us adults, after an hour of them doing this, are like, why are you doing this? It's because they actually get it and we don't. And we need to learn from them how to enter into the things that are so simple, so boring in a sense for adults. But we have to grow up and become children again. If we do that and discover wonder, 
then when we come and approach the Blessed Sacrament, that which we could easily pass over for the earthquake, the storm, and all these wild things, we'll be able to cover our face and realize that we are in the presence of God who speaks the small whisper. The third word, unafraid. The gospel is totally speaking about this. One of the things that Jesus says more than anything else in the gospel is, do not be afraid. Have no fear. Be not afraid. And he says this to Peter in the midst of the storm. He says, don't be afraid. It's me. And St. Peter walks towards him on the water. Pope Francis very beautifully this past weekend said these words. He said, very much just with the heart of a father, saying to the young people there, saying, young people, you probably feel discouraged and you feel like you can't really add anything. Maybe we feel that insecurity sometimes of what's the difference? There's such high dreams, high desires, And yet we look at a world so broken that we just kind of give up and say, what's the point? And then he said these words. He said, it's not just me who's telling you, don't be afraid, but Jesus is looking at you now and saying, even in your failures, even in those times where you get discouraged and fall away, just look back to me and don't be afraid. This is what Jesus does with Peter. Peter falls, but we forget that he walked on water. And the Lord just wants us, when we feel like we've failed, we want to give up, the Lord just gently takes our hand, pulls us up, and just says, it's okay, don't be afraid. Yes, you've fallen, and maybe you'll fall again. But just keep looking at my eyes and walk on the water with me. This is what the Lord says to each one of us. When you feel discouraged, when you feel like, what's the point? You're ready just to throw in the towel. Jesus reaches down one more time, lifts you up, says, look into my eyes. Don't look at these waves because my eyes will get you through the darkness. Shine. Listen. Do not be afraid.